Hello dear chess friends and uh, welcome to our new video. In that video, as in uh, the same course, uh, we will learn about uh, objects for attack. You will see various uh, circumstances of uh, leading correct attack and you will learn uh, how to go for attack, where to strike, when to attack and what are some prepositions uh, need to be fulfilled to be able to attack at all. Uh, in that chapter and in that video we will uh, see the game, not so famous game, not often published game, but still perfect example for our topic. Game is played between Yuri Balashov and uh, Tony Miles in 1978 in uh, Bugoyno tournament. Uh, where Yuri Balashov managed with white pieces to crush opponent's position, all that due to uh, Black King stay in the center. Uh, of course, in that chapter, you can predict, we will talk about uh, a King stuck in center. Doesn't matter if casting was prevented or if opponent just delayed casting or neglected casting or maybe planned to castling. Uh, on some side, but uh, didn't manage to do that. Never mind. Well, we'll see uh, what are prerequisites uh, to lead successful attack. And uh, not always king stuck in the center is bad. Of course, with queens on the board, you'll see that there is higher probability king will face problems stuck in center. But still, it is important to have maybe space advantage maybe better development, maybe combination of that two factors uh, to get able to lead successful attack to opponent king. Let's see what happened in that game. Let's start with it. Yuri Balashov started with d4 and after d5 there was played move knight to f3. After black move knight to f6, white played c4. Well, there is a possibility to switch to queen gambit with e6, to slav defense with c6, maybe to catalan after white plays g3 in some moment. But in that game, let's see, game went for some sharp mode of, of course, after d takes c, white played knight c3, a6 leads to sharp positions and white played, of course, e4. Well, you can see that, you can consider that as a gambit, white sacrificed the pawn with a chance to uh, activate the center. Of course, uh, white has center, so black should go for keeping that pawn alive. B5 and with uh, dangerous advance, E5, white wants to get somehow the initiative. After E5, black played knight to D5. What to say about that position? What to do with white knight? Uh, taking black knight is not uh, logical because black queen will go to domination square and uh, white won't be able to go for any serious using the, that potential problem because after g3 there is bishop g4 if white goes for there okay you can see that after queen e4 there is crashing and white would be in huge problems uh, if white goes for knight e4 that makes sense but still nothing special i think because black can just play e6 calmly with following by bishop b7 h6 or maybe black can start first with h6 gaining control over so important square g5 paralyzing three minor pieces or white and maybe with e6 to go for bishop b7 with playing on the queen side by firmly occupying spot on d5 that's why white decided before black goes for uh bishop b7 or a6 that stabilizing moves why decided to strike on the queen side with a4 and now there is pressure on b5 uh let me show that if black plays c6 there is a b and if c b knight b5 and definitely white will be better in our game black decided to take and after b takes c3 it is time to stop for a moment now black allowed serious mistake he played queen d5 which is absolutely the nonsense 
Uh, if he wants to install Bishop on d5 and to set battery on that longest light square diagonal, okay, he should start with Bishop b7 and then to try to go for some battery this way. Playing Queen d7, Queen d5 is bad because as you can see, Black wanted to go for battery this way, which is not which is not correct. How to continue as white? Well, normally uh, black has, there is a lot of traffic on that diagonal, you see. There is black queen on that diagonal, the rook and queen in front of the rook. So that is signal for white to go for attack. Instead of playing bishop b7, which would be normal move, or maybe just calmly e6, of course, black exposes his queen. And what is the most important, black uh black will be very soon back in development because don't forget bishop f8 rook h8 are still on initial places and black king cannot easily go for castling after queen d5 there is g3 bishop e6 now we see black's idea bishop g2 and queen to b7 well, what is now the point of that play? What to do is white. Uh, in that moment, I suggest you maybe to pause the video and to try yourself to find a plan. How to exploit fact black has queen and rook on that diagonal where white bishop is already placed. Now I'll show you the, the, the solution. If knight g5, evidently after bishop d5, Black will gain tempi for uh, because of attack on that diagonal and after taking, taking and castling, Black will be able to play e6 and to firmly finish development with bishop e7, calmly castling with everything okay and uh, his extra pawn very soon will be probably decisive position of factor. Uh, instead, white went for castling, bishop d5. And now it is time to think again about the position. Once again, I suggest you to pause the video. Try now, dear chess friends, to uh, get a solution for white. Try now to get the proper solution. Once again, I will pay attention on very important factors. A lot of traffic is on that diagonal. Maybe you can go for use it. It looks impossible, but maybe it is not impossible at all. Also. The most important factor is black king is in center and there is no chance to castle very soon. Uh, such moves like knight c6 or knight d7 with long castling uh, will lead to nothing because black will, king will not be safe on the queen's side. But how to castle king's side? Now we see the problem. Uh, black didn't play e6, bishop e7. He is so back in development and white must do something very quickly to prevent black's next maneuver evident maneuver e6 and bishop e7 with upcoming casting how to prevent that how to strike how to use the fact his king is still in the center now we go i hope you will find decisive uh decisive move e6 that is the key move in white attack uh, that move will either crush black pawn structure after f takes c6 or after bishop e6 that diagonal would be opened and uh, black is still blocked. There is no e6 and bishop e7 possibility. Let's say what happens after f takes c. That looks still as better option. Now both knight h4 and maybe calm move rook e1 will keep advantage. Idea will be to put pressure on e6. After black plays maybe g6, there is also possibility of h4 or maybe comp strategical possibility of bishop f4, maybe bishop g7. White can play that position even positionally with uh, maybe bishop p5. But I would rather for some something like knight h4. Well, idea is to uh, make pawn e6 unprotected and go for capturing it uh, of course after f takes c knight h4 can be done immediately with also 
other idea of queen h5. That would keep initiative for white, but after bishop e6, you'll see black faced even bigger problems. Knight g5 this time, of course. Bishop d5, bishop d5, queen d5, and now powerful move a, b, a, b. Why that? Well, with the idea to make black queen passive. Looks like black is able to survive. There is e6, there is h6, finishing development with activating bishop, casting again, extra pawn will be decisive positional factor. But Yuri Balashov observed that position definitely deeper and he found perfect possibility to continue with the dangerous threatening to black. Well, he played queen g4. What's the idea of queen g4? How to handle that position as black? There are numerous possibilities and I will give you observation. Uh, I will give you uh, explanation to all of them. You can observe deeper and you will see without problems that knight d7, for instance, will fall to knight f7. After black takes, <coughs> queen d7, white is only a pawn down, but you can see unsecured black king is a decisive positional factor with direct attack with rook e1, bishop g5, white will very soon uh, win the game. What in case of e6? Well then, knight e6 will crash black. If black captures, white will just do bishop g5 next move with an easy win. Well, for instance, after this, white can play something like, I think, d5, yeah. Uh, also, if black does not take that knight, okay, e5 would be open and next move can be moving knight somewhere, threats are knight c7, knight g7, also knight f8 with rook e1 and black is definitely lost. If black tries with queen b7, there is queen f5, beautiful move, attacking f7 this time and after f6, knight e6, you can see, dear chess friends, that black is not able to finish development in some uh, good manner. What can black do here? Well, I don't have idea. After that, white can continue knight b5, gaining material back and continuing with strong pressure. A strong pressuring on black position. Well, after that, you'll see that sooner or later we can expect pawn c4 will fall. Black will still continue playing with uh, passive pieces. Maybe there is something even better for white, but there is no need to go for this. Uh, I keep on mind maybe queen c5 attacking c7 with knight with the idea to support knight with d5 and continue with, initi uh, with uh, maintaining initiative and supporting initiative with rook e1, but doesn't matter. Game is pretty hopeless for black. Uh, after knight c6, which was played, there is queen a3 this time. So, yes, attacking f6, but still supporting uh, initiative by threatening on that the longest diagonal. So, queen on f2, uh, queen is placed on f3 with two purposes, attacking on f7 and dangerously pinning black knight. What to do is black? Huh, there is not knight d8, only move is f6, knight e6, threatening simply knight c7. Queen b7, now black is able maybe to jump knight a5, knight d8 to get relief, but no way. After queen d5, white prevents everything. There is not knight d8 because of queen d8. There is not knight a5 because I think again uh, of uh, queen d8. Let me show you. After that, I think game is pretty lost for black. As you can see, uh, there is no king f7 because of knight d8, so black cannot finish development. He tried with g5 uh, to prevent a deadly threat of bishop f4. Yeah, that is threat of capturing knight c7. Black played g5, and now still it is. it looks uh, almost impossible for white to continue attack, to continue attacking, but of course, if you strategically lead game in some purest manner, in some strategically, um, let's say, convincing manner, 
there must be some tactic which will in some decisive moment come to help to you. Well, this time still there is tactic bishop f4. It looks surprisingly, but with g5 black actually didn't prevent anything. If gf, queen h5 and after that black loses the queen. So many tactical motives, so many double attacks, so many forks, so many weak light squares and all that should be added to the most important factor on that list that is uncastled black king which is stuck in the center. Black practically plays without bishop, without rook, with king in center he cannot survive. He tried to organize something with this. There is knight c7 with knight e6 back but white played rook e1. <coughs> uh, for same reason black must not, sorry, for same reason black must not take because after that queen will be lost, that's why black try with queen b6, but this time knight c7, king f8 and rook e6. Knight c6 falls, main defensive piece after gf, rook c6, queen b8 and white conver converted smoothly after knight e6, king e8, rook c7. There is threat of mate with queen d7, queen e7 after king f7. Black lost after that. You can try, dear chess friends, uh, to find something better for black. You will not find anything. In that final position, there is rook c8 threat, there is queen e7 threat, and black finally resigned. Black resigned in move 29. It looks like that was sharp play and relatively long game, but don't forget, after knight g5, I think black is so close to collapse. Actually, after knight g5, there is nothing better black can do than he played. King stuck in the center, white angry pieces, ultimate control over light squares, all that uh, helped white to hold that brilliant victory. And let's once again pay attention on very important moment, queen d5. By exposing his queen, black will be forced to uh, lose so many time, and by losing so many time, he won't be able to organize castling king king side uh, this time I think it is not delaying casting looks like rather that is neglecting of casting and the white punished that in style so with all that moves white found perfect possibility if I e6 stops black castling there is no e6 with bishop e7 black bishop must go back if f takes okay white will continue with rook e1 or maybe Knight h4 with continue attacking, threatening queen h5 this time. After bishop takes e6, that gave white chance to move knight with tempo and to organize uh, misplacing black queen this time to a8 and to strike finally with queen g4. With this move, as you could see, everything went smoothly till the, the very end of the game. That would be all for that video, my dear chess friends. I hope you could learn a thing or two uh, from that example, from that magnificent game. And uh, I hope uh, that example uh, will help you in your future career to organize some attacks to opponent kings or maybe uh, not to forget castling, making your king safe this way. Wish you many victories like that Yuri Balashev's victory over Tony Miles and I see you soon with new material. That would be all for this video. Bye bye.